At 23 minutes past one, on the morning of April the 26th, 1986, the world was seconds away from its worst ever nuclear accident. Reactor number four at the Chernobyl nuclear power station in the Soviet Union exploded. Five minutes later, a phone call, recorded at the time, was the first alert of a tragedy in the making. By morning, the physical devastation was revealed, but much worse was to come. The disaster at Chernobyl brought death and disease. It brought the very idea of nuclear power into question. And within the Soviet Union, the trauma of Chernobyl was so great that many see it as the first step in the breakup of the communist regime. This film tells the story, minute by minute, second by second, of the one hour countdown to tragedy. It's seen through the eyes of the key actors in the drama, the workers who were accidentally led to their deaths, and the innocent bystanders who looked on. Based on documented evidence and eyewitness reports, it has been filmed on location inside the surviving areas of the Chernobyl nuclear power station. The control room at Chernobyl's reactor number four. It is here that all the key decisions in the coming hour will be taken. The future of the reactor and the world beyond is in the hands of three men. At only 26, Leonid Toptunov is senior control engineer. His job is to control the enormous power in the reactor. 17. Alexander Akimov is the shift foreman, the captain of the ship. But tonight he is outranked. Deputy Chief Engineer Anatoly Dyatlov is in charge. Dyatlov is one of the Soviet Union's top nuclear engineers. He's also a hard man, operating in a harsh system. There is a further vital character, the newly commissioned reactor number four itself, one of the communist regime's proudest technological achievements. Tonight, the control room is preparing for a safety test on the reactor. But a fateful argument is brewing between the two senior engineers and Dyatlov about the level of power at which it is safe to begin the test. On this night, Chernobyl is harboring two deadly secrets. The first is a potentially fatal flaw in the reactor's design, which the engineers are unaware of. A flaw that makes it highly unstable when run at low power. The second secret concerns the man in charge. Anatoly Dyatlov's own history is scarred by the very technology he is seeking to dominate. Tonight, Dyatlov and the reactor will face each other in a battle of strength that will destroy them both. Thirty-one minutes past midnight. The argument over the power level at which the safety test on Chernobyl's reactor number four can begin grows ever more serious. The test has been demanded by Russia's atomic energy authorities and stems from the Cold War fear of being attacked that still grips the Soviet Union. A few
few years before, the Israeli Air Force bombed an Iraqi nuclear reactor built by the Russians. Since then, Soviet scientists have demanded tests on their reactors to see what would happen if they came under enemy attack and their power supply was knocked out. But Deputy Chief Engineer Anatoly Dyatlov is deliberately ignoring top-level advice on how the test should be done. The guidelines state that the reactor's power should be between 700 and 1,000 megawatts when the test begins. Dyatlov wants to do the test at only 200 megawatts to preserve the cooling water that stops the reactor overheating. He believes there is little risk. Unfortunately, that night, there was not a single man in the control room that he saw as his equal. There really wasn't anyone there who was as strong a character or as professionally qualified whose opinion he would respect. Dyatlov is not in fact an unreasonable man. Rather, he is a creature of the communist system that has raised and promoted him. He was born a fisherman's son in Siberia and ran away from home at the age of 14. He's overcome these unpromising beginnings to rise through the ranks as an engineer. He is a party man who tries to follow the rule book. But he's aware that in the nuclear industry, the rule book and reality often don't match. To get things done, shortcuts and improvisation are sometimes the only answer. Winding the power down has led to it dropping too fast. One mile away from Chernobyl is the dormitory town of Pripyat. Everyone who lives here works at the power station. Though they don't know it, all these people's destinies will be dictated by the events unfolding in control room number four. Among them, soundly asleep, is Nikolai Fomin, the chief engineer of Chernobyl, who left the order for the safety test to be carried out. A few hundred yards away, Natasha Yevchenko is being kept awake by her two-year-old son, Kirill. From her window, Natasha can see the lights of the nuclear power station where her husband, engineer Sasha Yevchenko, is working a routine night shift. As he passes through the kilometer-long turbine hall, Sasha's thinking not of work, but of the upcoming May Day holidays. There was something about that night, something unusual. For some reason, I got all dressed up. The weather was remarkable, very warm for spring. I went off to work in a terrific mood. But my wife said that all night, our son Kirill was crying. She didn't sleep a wink. Others are also awake. Among them, two fishermen. One, a Chernobyl maintenance man, casting for fish, attracted by the power plant's warm wastewaters. Twenty-four minutes to one. A new problem disturbs the concentration of the increasingly force operators. Senior unit control engineer Boris Stolyarchuk controls the flow of water through the reactor. He's all too used to alarms like this. 
As for the water levels in the separator drums, it was always difficult to control them at low power. All the operators knew about it, so I didn't feel afraid. Then... Twenty-two minutes to one. The reactor has ground to a complete halt. Dyatlov makes a fateful decision. To raise power after 12.30, the shift actually had to pull all the control rods out of the reactor. This was like cocking a gun. 